Okay, so go with your gut feeling. I know you're adults. So do what you love doing the most. And if that doesn't qualify, don't take up the job. Okay, even if it pays a lot more, if all you have to do is to sit and press on the Excel sheet, please don't do it. Unless you love doing that on the Excel sheet. Okay, you guys agree? So at least, you know, if some of this thinking gets into all of us when we go look at the career options, I think that will help us be happier in the jobs we take up. The second thing, okay, so that's, uh, this is probably the only thing I want you, the most important thing I want you to remember and act on from this whole talk is this one line, okay? It is, once you've decided this is what I love doing and this is what I want to be, write it down. Okay, take a piece of paper, okay, not a Gmail to yourself. Okay, take a piece of paper, pen, and please write down, okay, carefully in your room, in five years, I want to have started, I would like to have started a Facebook.com-like company. Okay, if that's your goal. Or whatever else, you know, I want to build, uh, build a, uh, like, uh, casual, I want to be in the NGO side and do something amazing for Indians. So whatever it is, I want to be the Prime Minister of India in 20 years, whatever. Write that goal down. Okay, because that makes a huge, huge difference. When there's a whole study people have done with these graduates from Harvard University, uh, kind of people who graduated in 1970, and then they took all their salaries and positions in their companies in the society in 1995 and said, okay, what differentiates them? Some have been billionaires, some have become fairly good uh, middle senior managers, and some, some frankly have not done that well. So what is the difference that caused, what's the single metric that caused all of, uh, all of them to succeed or not so succeed so well? So they looked at every, you know, you guys are, uh, you all have done your uh, MA 101 and all the statistics. You know you can run chi-square, you can run correlations, and you can come out and say this is not based on gender, this is not based on which part of the world they are from, it's not based on any of that. So one question apparently that turned out to be the biggest differentiator between the three levels of people. The successful, you know, from Harvard, I don't think there are many failures, so the successful, the better than successful, and the amazingly successful, right? is that the guys who were successful, reason, reasonably successful, are the guys who said, I came out of campus and I took the first best paying job I got, that I reasonably liked. Okay, like most of us do that. Okay, I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. I took the best paying job that I decently, reasonably liked and I did well in my life. So the second set of people said, well, I knew when I came out of my uh, Harvard, I knew what I wanted to be. Okay, I wanted to be the CEO of a Wall Street firm. Okay, so I planned and picked the job that would let me go towards being a CEO. Okay, those guys did extremely well, right? But the guys that did stupendously astronomically well are the guys who said, a small percent of people who said, I actually took a piece of paper and wrote down, and by the way, here, is it, here it is in my wallet. When I graduated from Harvard, I wrote down that I want to be the president of Wells Fargo Bank, right? So, one of the, there's a guy named Brian Tracy who kind of has done all these correlation studies and he's come back and said that knowing what you want to, to do is very important and writing it down is even more important because it does two things. One, you're becoming more serious about it. When you write down, you're actually forcing yourself to think, sit and think about what you want to do. And the second thing is you can always refer back to it, right? You kind of wrote it, now you have a proof. You cannot just say, I forgot about it. You have written it somewhere. You can obviously change it. You know, you can write tonight, you know. By the way, I gave this talk at IITs, I've given it at NITs, and I always make this my last slide. Uh, it's only from, and I'll, I'll be fair, frank and say, it's only from NIT Suratkal that I got mails from pretty much more than a couple of dozens of students saying, Rishi, this is what I want to do. And I'm right, I wrote it down and I'm just emailing it to you. So I, I, I think, you, can, you don't, if you want, you can email it, but please write it down for yourselves. You agree with this? How many of you know what you want to do five years down the road? Fantastic, yes, I've done a really great job here. A lot of people seem to know it. So, Please take the next step, write it down, share it with others if you like to, but keep it for yourself. So here are the next four steps, okay? I'm, I'm an engineer at heart, so I don't want to just give a gyan and say, you know, it's all good and well. This is what you're going to do, right? The respect for uh, kind of career success. A, think big about what you want to achieve, okay? So, you know, a 10 lakh job is not thinking big, okay? Uh, starting a company like Facebook is thinking big, or even a smaller company, but think big then I want a slightly better job. That's one. Second, write it down. And when you write down, please put a date on it if you can. So by 2012 or 2022, I would like to have started a company with 100 employees making one crore per year, whatever, right? Be specific, put it down. Since you're not sharing it with a lot of people, it's okay, even if it looks crazy. Just write it down for your own self. Third, now this is where you're a BTEC engineer, engineer from here, right? 
So it's not just enough to have a goal and uh, specifics, you need to have a plan towards it. So now you're going to write down below that one line, okay, here are the three things I need to do if I want to start a company. Got it? And now this is where what separates you from a thinker, from a doer, an entrepreneur, is what is that first step that you're going to take today or by the end of this week that will take, help you towards it. So it's not just about keeping it on the paper. So I want to be a writer. Okay, I actually want to be a writer, right? So I want to be a writer 10 years down the road. I would like to have published a book like Amitav Ghosh. Right? Okay, good goal, right? Okay, it's so big, so I won't share it, right? Uh, but I'll write it down, okay? And to, I will say, okay, to be a really successful writer, I need to take some writing courses. I need to read more books. I need to think about, take, do whatever I need to do. So these are all, this is my plan. Okay, what's the first step I'm going to do this week? I'm going to write it down and say, I'm going to call up a number, look up Just Dial and go take up a literary writing course and do it. Got it? Is this practical? But, okay, it's only practical when you follow it. So please, please don't, uh, don't forget it after this CLT talk. Uh, do this. So before I end the talk, uh, the key takeaways, right? I mean, all the nice uh, puzzles aside, these are the five things I would like you to remember. Okay, one, when you're brainstorming, build up on the idea before you critique it. Easy? I mean, guys, it's, it's not that easy to do, but please do it. Okay, we are natural uh, idea critiques. Okay, that's one. Second, the three tricks for disruptive ideas. If nothing, just remember kangaroo. Kangaroo is a special animal that works with every problem in the world in my mind. So just, but I mean, you know, just remember those tricks. Three, okay, this one I didn't talk about, and uh, uh, this, is, this is an interesting one. You know, these days, uh, we, the way we solve, the way, we all feel inundated with a lot of information, right? We go, any problem somebody gives, we immediately go on Google, we go to Twitter, we go to Facebook, or ask 15 friends, and then we go to Wikipedia, and 99% of the world's problems are solved, right? And that sort of thing. But if you want some, a new way to solve the problem, sometimes it doesn't come from just absorbing and constantly reading on your iPads and on Facebook. Sometimes, especially these days, we didn't have this problem in 92, but I know my daughter has this problem now, is that, there's so much information out there in the world, you think that the solution is always there, and you just need to do the right search word in Google and you'll get the answer, or Wikipedia. So, but the best new ideas don't come like that, right? If you want the creative new idea, you really want to be like a little bit like KQL, which is you actually silent, go radio silent for an hour. You know, try doing it, it's not that easy anymore. Where there's an hour where you're read all, but you stop talking to people, you stop reading, okay? You, he went to sleep, he says, but you could just sit in a park, stare at a lake, or sit in your room, but don't read. Don't keep absorbing information. You guys agree with that? Do you feel there's too much information out there? So information is good, but sometimes you need to let it kind of sink down, and that's where the amazing creative ideas from inside will come. So leave some time for silence. Don't always uh, uh, just keep taking in, right? Uh, the, okay, that's a new point. Uh, the fourth one is write your goals down, simple. Right? How many of you are going to actually do it? Oh, guys, good job, man. I, I feel really happy now. That's good. That's uh, roughly equal to the number of people who wanted to get the highest paying job. So uh, <laughs> that's really extremely well. Okay. Okay. And coming to that, the last one, right? You will get paid well. You'll all do very well in your lives. But do what you love the most. You have that choice. Okay? A lot of people in the world don't have the choice to do whatever they want. They need to work for the minimum pay they can get. But you have the choice. So you can make the decision now. You can make it three years later, whenever. But always think about what you love doing the most. If you want to be that writer, start working towards it. Okay, it doesn't mean you should not take up a job. You can take up a job and on your weekend start learning about writing. So what I did, and, and by the way, before I came to this in the true social sense, I asked this question to some of my Facebook friends. Many of them are 92 batch uh, from here. What do you want to tell the guys, right? So the overwhelming advice I got is this. So people said, this is, I wish, this is a guy named Caps. I forget his real name now. Uh, Caps uh, Mechanical Electronics 92. So he said, I wish somebody had told me this in 92, that don't let your past achievements limit your future. Okay? You've done well, you've gotten into IIT, you've become whatever, chemical engineer, computer science engineer, whatever, but don't let all of that limit how much more you can do. Okay? So this is not the end of it, right? This is just the beginning. Now you need to, don't overwhelm yourselves with the IIT brand. Right? We all love it, but don't, that's not the peak, guys. The IIT brand is not the peak of it. It is very much the first step, it's a good first step, but what you can do next has, is a lot, lot more exciting. So don't let everything you've done so far say you've done it. Okay, don't get that thought, thought in. You guys agree with that? It's a bit harsh, 
because we all feel, feel, you know, the four years of preparing for JEE and four years of fighting, now this guy comes and says, this is not the end. What the hell? I mean, I'll get 10 lakhs and I'll be done. So you guys agree with that? So the real stuff is ahead. Okay, so, okay, again, you know, I can't believe I'm standing on this side of CLT. So uh, thank you, uh, Professor Magaraj, and thank you, Suresh, and the others that uh, invited me here. Okay, we still have 10 minutes. Yeah. Freewheeling questions. Okay, please. What is your opinion about Me Too organization? About? Me Too. Can I repeat what does it mean? So if somebody is this facebook.com and I start uh, myfacebook.com. That one. Okay, A, it's not going to work, at least in the Facebook case, right? But you know, you're re but uh, lots of people have done it very well. Okay, lots of Yeah, you know, uh, how it is going to work. So, that's a good question, right? Because I think it's easy to dismiss this and say that uh, we should never copy others' ideas. We should always be the originators, innovators. And that's my opinion. My opinion is that as, you know, as humans, maybe as IITians, we, are, uh, we have the brain power to think of new things. Then why should I just copy somebody's idea and do it? So I would first go with that. But really, the, the right answer in my mind to you is, what is a mission? What is your goal in life, right? If your mission is to help, let's say my mission is to help poor people in the villages, then it doesn't matter if I copy somebody's idea. It's not about coming up with a new idea. It's about helping people, right? So the pharmaceutical company that wants to copy ideas after the patents expire, of course, and sell it for less price, why not? Because they have a different different mission. So everything is relative to what you want to do, right? So if you want to make money, if you want to make people happy. And if the only way to do it, the best way to do it is to copy somebody's idea, go ahead and do it. But if, you're, if you have a different mission, is to help people, but help people by doing something creative because you're smart, then don't copy. So it's not totally right or wrong. It completely depends on what your, what's the mission that you're going after. So uh, it's a great question. Uh, at least... It depends very much again on where you are placed, right? Within an IIT, I don't know if you guys probably have some meeting clubs and discussions where you sit and uh, discuss ideas. Uh, in Bangalore, I'll give you an example, and maybe if it's not there, you should start it here. In Bangalore, there is an event called Startup Saturday, and I go there and speak and uh, interact with the entrepreneurs every now and then. So every so many Saturdays, people, this many people meet in a room, okay? Somebody gives them a free room. They meet, somebody gets up and gives, talks about their ideas for five minutes. Five speakers talk and get down. And then people gather over biscuits and coffee and say, okay, should we work together? So do you have something like that in Chennai? What is it called? Startup Saturday is here also. So it's in Madras, I mean, IIT Madras? Yes. I mean, they host it here. OK. So I, th I think in Bangalore, that's been a big success. So if it's already there, then best places to start there. And the other is a room like this. You know, if you're a serious entrepreneur, you, at the end of this talk, you would say, guys, whoever is serious, let's meet up every Saturday and do it, if they're not already happening, right? OK. Any other? OK. So I'm not going to answer this, guy, by the way. Okay, but I, I do want you know, I think it's interactive. And it's such a, such a great question, because we can just look at it, laugh, and say, you know, how come you don't know what you love already? But uh, you could stop a 60-year-old man successful in life out there and say, have you done everything that you love? And you probably will, some of them will say, no, I never figured out what I love the most. So I think it's a very fair question. I would actually invite uh, the more uh, knowledgeable faculty, Professor Nagaraj, anybody to pitch in and say, how would you find what you love the most? I have my answer, but I've been speaking a lot. So I'll let somebody else guide you on that. 